Uh, thank you. So, I will start off by uh, briefly reviewing some important results in this and then move on to the problem that I am currently thinking about. So, we will fix some notation f is a non Archimedean local field. So, these are finite extensions of q p or uh, the uh, field of Laurent series in one variable. O is the ring of integers, p is the maximal ideal. And uh, uh, an example of this is uh, for the Laurent series in one variable, the ring of integers is the formal power series and the prime ideal is generated by uh, the indeterminate t. So, uh, to define close local fields, we choose two non Archimedean local fields uh, with ring of integers O and P, O prime and P prime defined accordingly. We say that the fields F and F prime are M close if O mod P to the M and O prime mod P prime to the M are isomorphic. Um, so, an example of this is uh, the field of Laurent series in one variable and Q P of P to the 1 over M are M close. So, um, this is a total okay. uh, this is a totally ramified extension of q p of degree m and uh, uh, that is all we need to ensure to make sure that this isomorphism works between for the for the ring of integers between these two. Uh, this can be done in general. So, given a local field of characteristic p and m, we can always find a field of characteristic 0 that is m close to f. So, we can approximate fields of characteristic p with local fields of characteristic 0. Yeah, because the residue fields are isomorphic, because q the residue field of q p is z p mod p z p which is just z mod p. Yeah. So, uh, there are two important results that study the representation theory of uh, uh, over close local fields, representation theory of Galois groups over close fields and also of, of reductive algebraic groups. The first one um, is due to Professor Delin. So, I will fix some notation here for, for the rest of the talk. If x is an object that we are working over a field f, then x prime will denote the object over uh, will be the corresponding object over f prime. So, uh, that is the notation we are using. And, and uh, we fix a separable closure, i f is the inertia group and i f to the m is the mth higher ramification subgroup with the upper numbering. Um, then the theorem is if the fields f and f prime are m close, then the Galois group of f bar over f modulo this mth higher ramification subgroups, uh, these are isomorphic for the fields that are m close, for two fields that are m close. So, some important consequences of this uh, isomorphism, it has some uh, uh, properties. So, we can pass to the, this isomorphism will hold when we pass to the abelianizations and that is compatible with local class field theory. And uh, moreover, it induces a bijection between the complex finite dimensional representations of this Galois group trivial on i f to the m and the corresponding objects over f prime. Now, uh, so this will this sort of enables us to study representation theory of Galois groups over closed fields. Now, uh, we have uh, the L and epsilon factors associated to such representations. So, furthermore, if you have phi v is a representation of the Galois group trivial on i f to the m and you get a representation phi prime v prime using this Delin isomorphism, then their L and uh, epsilon factors are the same. So, the epsilon uh, in the epsilon factors, there is an additive character involved. The characters have to be chosen in a compatible manner. So, if z is a non trivial additive character of f with conductor k, then z prime is a character of f prime that satisfies these two conditions that the conductor is also k and it uh, they both agree on, on this quotient. Note that p to the k minus m mod p to the k is just isomorphic to o mod p to the m, and uh, for close fields, you, you can expect this and we set z and z prime to be compatible if these two if they satisfy these two conditions. Um, so, this is the story on the Galois side. Uh, there is a similar story for uh, reductive groups uh, uh, due to Kazdan. So, we will fix uh, g to be any split connected reductive group defined over z. For example, you can think of g as g l n and uh, we take the f points of g and define k m to be the kernel of g of o to g of o mod p to the m. This is the mth usual congruence subgroup. And uh, we consider the Hecke algebra h of g k m 
uh, this is actually spanned by the characteristic functions of the double cosets km, g km. Then uh, the theorem is the following. You fix a non-Archimedean field f and m, then there exists an L greater than or equal to m such that if f prime is L close to f, then the Hecke algebras at level m become isomorphic. So to have an isomorphism at level m, you need the fields to be a few levels closer. Again, again uh, uh, with this result, uh, irreducible representations pi v with non-zero km fixed vectors correspond to simple h of gkm modules. So this again gives us a natural bijection between the irreducible representations of g such that v k m is not zero and correspondingly irreducible representations of g prime such that v prime k m prime is not zero. Again, using this Hecke algebra isomorphism. So, for GLN, there is a variant of this uh, isomorphism, Kazdan isomorphism, which is due to Hobbes. So, I'll uh, recall that it's a, it's a useful variant in some cases. So, instead of working with the usual congruence subgroups, uh, here we work with the Iwahori congruence subgroup. So, I is the standard Iwahori subgroup of GLN, and IM is the mth filtration subgroup there. So, how considered this Hecke algebra, H of, uh, this is only for GLNF, H of GLNF and IM. And he was able to write down a presentation, an explicit list of generators and exhaustive list of relations for this Hecke algebra. And just by inspection of the generators, we can, uh, n we can see that if the fields F and F prime are M close, then these two Hecke algebras become uh, isomorphic. So, this gives a variant of the Kazdan isomorphism for GLN. So, if you have non-zero IM fixed vectors, then that corresponds to non-zero IM prime fixed vectors on the other side. Um, now, the, the reason this is uh, useful is if you want to study the properties of a representation, you have to understand the action of the Hecke algebra on it. So, with this, you just have to see what those finite list of generators do to the representation. So, uh, in fact, Lemay used this to prove that if the fields f and f prime are m plus 1 close, and uh, if pi v is an irreducible admissible z generic representation, then pi prime v prime is z prime generic. Again, uh, z and z prime corresponds, to, z corresponds to z prime as we uh, talked about before. So, uh, he was able to give a matching of the Whittaker models of these two representations. Now, the, since we know that the, the Artin factors of representations that correspond via the Delin isomorphism are equal, uh, so we can ask if the same thing works for the rankin selber gamma factors on this side associated to pairs of representations. So I checked it in uh, this case. So sigma and tau are two irreducible admissible supercuspidal representations. We assume that the conductors are bounded, say, above by m. Uh, we assume f and f prime are sufficiently close. This sufficiently close will actually be determined explicitly by m and n and t. Uh, you, we'll, we'll know how, how close the fields need to be. And if sigma prime and tau prime are the corresponding representations for gln f prime and gln t, glt f prime over the other field, then uh, that you obtain using these Hecke algebra isomorphisms, then we can show that the rankin selberg gamma factors are the same where again z and z prime correspond as before. These are the rankin selberg gamma factors associated to pairs of representations. But you don't know it for, for n and epsilon. For n and epsilon. So the L factors, if you assume that it's supercuspidal, we can say this claim ah, for, for L factors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, so the, this, the, I just reviewed this to set the stage for the problem that we are thinking about now. Uh, recently, Gann and Takeda established the local Langlands correspondence for GSP 4F, assuming the field F, local field is of characteristic 0. So, the, uh, the problem we are thinking about is, can we understand the local Langlands and characteristic P for these fields by approximating it with fields of characteristic 0. So, uh, so they, I will explain in a minute the characterization, but they have uh, given a list of properties in their characterization. We need to understand how each of those properties behave with respect to close local fields. So uh, let me quickly recall at least the part that I am looking at right now. So uh, the notation is pi of GSP 4F is the, is the set of irreducible admissible representations of GSP 4F. 
and phi of GSP 4 F is the admissible homomorphisms from uh, WF is here it is the whale, uh, whale group cross SL 2 C and the Langlands dual group here is GSP 4 C and the homomorphisms are taken up to GSP 4 C conjugacy. So, uh, then uh, their theorem is the following that there is a unique surjective finite to one map between uh, these two spaces satisfying a list of properties. I have not recalled all the properties here. There is only one property that I have recalled. Uh, this is the uh, crucial part of this problem it looks like. So, if pi is generic or non supercuspidal, then for any irreducible representation sigma of GLR f with r less than or equal to 2. Um, I think I need supercuspidal here also. I am sorry I missed that. Okay, so, and then L of s pi cross sigma, the L and gamma factors on this side agree with the R 10 factors on that side. These factors are obtained, the factors on the left are obtained using the langland shady method. Uh, the L and gamma factors on this side are obtained using the langland shady method. Uh, yes, the local coefficients, yes, the theory of local coefficients. So, uh, yeah, the langland shady method defines the local ln gamma factors uh, associated to generic representations. So, uh, so we need to understand uh, how, uh, firstly we have to generalize Lemay's work on generic representations that it was done for GLN, but we need to know that for GSP 4 F and we also need to understand if we can prove a similar result at least about the gamma factors arising out of the langland shady method. So, uh, we have some parts of this problem, uh, we have uh, some parts of this problem are done. So, let us say G is a split connected reductive group with simply connected derived subgroup. It is slightly, uh, it uh, takes care, it includes both GSP4 and GLN. This case includes both GSP4 and GLN. In this case, we can write down a presentation for the SEC algebra H of GI, uh, uh, generalizing the work of Ho. So, we have an explicit list of generators and relations again. And again by inspection of those relations and uh, we can show that if the fields f and f prime are m close, then these two Hecke algebras are isomorphic. And uh, again using that, this transfers uh, representations with non-zero i m fixed vectors here to representations there with non-zero i m prime fixed vectors. We can uh, and then Lemay's work would basically go through once we have the first two parts. So, we can show that if one is z generic, the other, prime, the other one is uh, z prime uh, generic. Now, uh, the, what we are currently working on is uh, trying to understand these local coefficients. They are defined uh, using intertwining operators and we take a functionals uh, in the langland shady method. We are trying to understand if these local coefficients, uh, he, he uses that to inductively define these gamma factors. If we can show a property about local, so let us say you have two representations that correspond in this fashion, do their local coefficients agree over the closed fields? Then that will be one step closer to. Uh, proving that the gamma factors in fact agree over closed fields. And uh, I just have to remark that for GLN, we already know that these local, co I mean it's, uh, it's, uh, it's due to Professor Shahidi that he has, sh he has shown that these local coefficients arising out of his method agree with the rankin silver gamma factors. So, in that case we already know that these two methods give the same thing, but it is not known in general. So, we are analyzing the local coefficients in that case. Yeah, so, that is the question I am thinking about right now. Thank you very much.